Hi, welcome to this third tutorial in my series on inverse trig functions. And what we're going to look at in this video is the inverse of y equals tan x. And to do this, what I've done is I've sketched the graph of y equals tan x for a domain between minus pi radians and pi radians. That's the equivalent of minus 180 degrees to 180 degrees. But it's a graph that you should be familiar with. We've got our asymptotes here at pi upon 2 and minus pi upon 2. And the curve would normally be a solid curve, but I've just done it as dotted at the moment. Now, when we need to work out the inverse tan of x, the notation that we would use is this, y equals arc tan x, or y equals tan with a little minus one up here, x, y equals the inverse tan of x, as we often say. And when we're looking at inverse relationships, as I pointed out in the earlier videos in this series, that you should be familiar with the fact that if you have a relationship y equals f of x, then the inverse relationship y equals f to the minus 1 of x is a reflection of y equals f of x in the line y equals x. So if we're to start to establish what this looks like graphically, then we need to draw the line y equals x here on our graph and then think about reflecting y equals tan x in this particular line, y equals x. Now, the key points to this are going to be the pi upon 2 and the minus pi upon 2. Pi upon 2 gets reflected up to here, and minus pi upon 2 gets reflected down to here. So these asymptotes here are going to be crucial in our graph. I'll just put the new range on. We've got that. And you can see how the asymptotes are reflected in y equals x. Horizontal lines now at pi upon 2 and minus pi upon 2. So that when we reflect the graph y equals tan x then in y equals x, this is what we get something like that. Now it's looking a bit overcrowded at the moment but it will um, slim down in a moment. Okay, But what we've got to look at now is that I want to create arc tan x or y equals the inverse tan of x to be a function. And for it to be a function we've got to make sure that for one value in the domain there's only one value in the range. And you can see this breaks down at the moment because if I was to take, for instance, this value of x in the domain here, then I get, say, this value of y in the range. And for the same value of x, I can come down, hit the dotted line here, and have another value of y. And if I was to be able to go further down, I'd hit the curve again. And the same applies going up, I'd hit the curve again. So it's not a function if I have this domain. So I've got to restrict the domain in order to get a one-to-one -one function. And to do that, if I restrict the domain between minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2 for y equals tan x, then what we're going to get is a graph looking like this. We can miss out these dotted parts of y equals tan x. So that when I reflect this part of y equals tan x in the line y equals x, what I get is this. And we can see that for any value of x now in the domain, that we don't have the option of getting this value up here anymore. We just have this value across here. Take any value of x in the domain, say this value over here, come up here, and I just get the one value of y in the range. So what we have then is the graph y equals arc tan x or y equals the inverse tan of x which now has a domain x that takes any real value. And the values in the range y are called the principal values. 
okay and y lies then in a range that goes from minus pi upon 2 to pi upon 2 so any time that you use your calculator and you do the inverse tan of x you're always going to get one value of y which is going to be in this range giving us then the principal value and it's very important then that you learn this graph and that you can realize what type of values that y is as you'll see later as we tackle inverse trig equations in the next few videos okay well that brings us to the end of this one and uh, hope that's have been of some use to you